Good day, Minecraftians. Purple Mentat here, bringing you episode 66 of my Agrarian Skies Hardcore Quest Let's Play. This game pack by Jadacat is available on the Feed the Beast launcher. Last time, I was working on some side quests. Between episodes, I upgraded my molecular assembly chamber to have three more pages worth of recipes, so I'd have some room for some stuff. And I also added six more CPUs to it. It's starting to dominate this end of the room. Also, because I discovered, as I was looking through, that a number of these bragging rights quests were very boring, I just did them off camera. Interior Decorator, Mine Factory Reloaded, Applied Energistics, and Vanilla Lover, all of them are just craft these blocks. There's nothing else to any of them. So what I have done is I went through and I crafted them all, and I'm assuming you guys don't need me to show you how to use NEI to craft these blocks. Once I had them all collected, I tossed them in these chests over here, which has everything that you need. So when you, if you download the world and you want to complete the quest, you can easily just look, oh, I need those vines, I need some of this stuff. It's really not that difficult. So, I'm going to hand those in real quick. First things first. Vanilla Lover. Applied Energistics. Mine Factory Reloaded. And Interior Decorator. And then I left off the quests that are a little bit more interesting. So, let's see. Put the Vanilla Weirdo sign in there. The Applied Fan in here. The MFR Fan in here. And the Morvi Level in here. Awesome. That gets me a Legendary Bag and three Epic Bags. The three Epic Bags, I have a bunch of Decor, which can join the rest of them in the Quest Rewards Cosmetic Chest. I have now received enough of these colored bricks that I have a full stack of each. Awesome. I get a yellow heart canister and 64 glass bottles of natural gas. Huh. That might be the only way that you can get natural gas at all on this mod pack. Yeah. Huh. That's interesting. I should probably find a use for that just because it's so very rare. Anyway. Put away the heart canisters. And then my legendary reward bag. Yeah. Right. Oh, that's actually not bad. Five stacks of pyrothium dust? That's kind of useful. I mean, I've been making it left and right for quite a while now, so... It's nice to just have a bunch and my system won't have to craft any for a while. Okay, moving on. Last time, I said I was going to start tackling the side quest in Bees and Trees Magnetic Personality. Now this requires eight mysterious magnets, and they need to be the level eight magnets, of which I've already received one in a reward bag. The level eight mysterious magnet. If I go over to here, I can submit that. There we go. That tells you exactly what you need. The problem is each mysterious magnet, well, let me show you. So a mysterious magnet, level eight is made with a diamond, a full block of redstone, and a dimensional singularity. That dimensional singularity is produced from a block of gold, two blocks of pillar, I mean two blocks of quartz, an endstone, and an eye of ender. Not so bad so far. It's just, it also uses two level 7 magnets. And each level 7 magnet has the same recipe, except two level 6 magnets. And each level 6 magnet, same recipe, but level 5 magnets. All the way on down to level 0 magnets which costs two compasses instead of any lower level magnet. This means that each and every single one of these level eight magnets will cost 511 diamonds, 2,304 iron because of the compasses and the iron ingot in the level zero recipe. 2,807 redstone from all the blocks of redstone and the redstone on the compass. 52,488 quartz to make the dimensional singularities. 59,049 gold ingots to make all of the blocks of gold. 6,561 endstone. Not that bad. 6,561 ender pearls and 6,561 blaze powder. So I need a lot of materials. To make seven more of those, I'm going to need to get myself, well, hang on, seven times 59049, another 413,000 gold ingots. That's going to take a while. 
I currently have something like 28,000, and that's from having allowed my single laser up there to run for probably a couple of weeks now, at least a good week solid with the the server chunk loaded and everything running offline. Pretty sure I set up the chunk loaders last last weekend. So, we're going to need to speed that along. First things first on that particular plan, we're going to make more lasers. I have a ton of power, it's time to put it to use. And I did some calculation and I figured out that I can support another full 7 laser drills, which means another 28 pre-chargers. And I'm going to get those crafting, make sure that they're going on my crafting monitor. They'll take a little while with the illuminators and all. Now, I'm also going to focus these laser drills to make them a little bit more effective at producing the gold that I need. And I'm going to do so using the laser focus yellow. And I'm not sure if I have one of those in my system yet. I do. So, hang on, do, do, boop. So I need yellow stained glass, which I've taught it how to make out of stained glass yellow, which comes from yellow ceramic dye, clay, and a bit of yellow dye. I'm just going to use dandelion yellow because I should have plenty of dandelions that I can grind up into the dye. Well, I don't know. I have 339 flower. Yeah, I'll grind up a couple stacks of dandelions and we'll be good. So I'm going to go upstairs, toss this into a pulverizer. That's a furnace. Now, I don't know if this pulverizer setup is going to be able to handle the kind of throughput that I'm going to be setting up with all of these lasers, but we're certainly going to find out. All right, so all that gets crafting, and it's going to be a little while. Oh, well, I've got my drills done. I have a handful of free chargers. I can go up there and start setting these up. Now, I want to get them set up along the same Y level, and I would like to limit the number of Tesseracts I use for this, but honestly, it's just going to take a lot. So let me turn off the clouds briefly. There we go. And start getting these going. Now, if I'm clever about it, I can actually get these rather tightly packed. I'm not super clever, though. Um, hang on. Let me... Uh, play with how I want to get this set up. I'll be back in a moment. Here we are. I now have a nice laser array. And, oh, this area is a death trap to fly through. So, need to be a little careful. Maybe not go directly through there ever again. That'd be good. So, I also got grabbed myself seven resonant energy cells because that will output enough if I have one connection per energy cell to power every single one of these pre-chargers. So I'm going to now hook up the wiring for these. And you know what? There's not going to be a pretty way of doing this, I don't think. It's just going to use a lot of conduit and a fair bit of item ducts as well. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a handful of chests, seven to be exact, for my seven um, laser drills on top of the drills themselves and they are going to output to item ducts which are going to feed back into the tesseracts and that i might actually need to get another interface or two set up on the default to be able to handle all of this input but we'll find out maybe i will maybe i won't we're about to see so there's your in progress shot i'll be back once i have the whole thing together all right, got all of my conduits laid down. I'm getting my resonant energy cells configured to input on top, output on bottom, and do 10,000 RF per tick for each. Which, with seven resonant energy cells and seven fully pre-charged laser drills, should be exactly perfect. Now I'm going to have the tesseracts up above, and I'm actually going to have four connections per tesseract which means that they'll be outputting around 12,000, I believe. No, 120,000 potential RF per tick. They won't actually be able to output that much because there won't be anywhere for it all to go, but lots of power will be input into the system, which will be good. So I need, I need more conduits. It's a good thing I told my system to make me some. There we are. All right. I'm going to grab me those 
conduits that have been crafting for me. Now, how do I want to set up the Tesseracts? Well, it would be most convenient, I think, to have a Tesseract on each side where the chests can be eas can easily input into it. So right like that. And then I can ring it around with the conduits. Because why not? Oh, you know what? That looks sloppy. I don't like that. That I like. That'll do. Okay. And then all I need to do is toss you on the default frequency, tell you to send items, block fluids, and receive energy. And already my... Well, these won't be filling up yet because all of my pre-chargers will be slowly working now. Not very quickly, but it's something. Which causes my laser drills to be slowly functioning, which will cause some ore of multiple types to be generated. Now that ore is going to need somewhere to go after not very long. Let's see, one, two, correct? Nope, I just had the one, actually. There we go. Oops, this guy set up the same way. There we are, on default. And I want to ignore redstone, not that it'll ever really be an issue, but just in case. With me outputting this much energy to default. Ooh, he's off center. I need him here if I want to have the aesthetic work. There we go. Do, 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 do. Because, you know, looks matter. If I'm going to build some sort of high-tech monstrosity, well, I want to have a proper high-tech monstrosity. Um, except this last one. I have no idea what to do with this last one. I guess I'll put it on a post right there. That works. And this guy's already set to the exact same configuration because he was the one that I had here before. Here, you can be right like this. It's a nice little claw. And I'll have it actually output on all the sides. So those energy cells should f start filling up fairly quickly. Excellent. They're now passing through power and everything's operating at just about full speed. I'm going to set up the item ducts off the top of the various chests. And they're going to run right along the center straight into the Tesseract. Yes. Good. Everything is going according to plan. That is a terrible thing to say. I am inviting misfortune and disaster. I don't know why I thought that was a good idea. Alright, so where's my servos? Start outputting from these. Ignore redstone. And once I have this configured, then I can start adding in the... Well... What do you call them? The foci? Yes, the laser foci, the yellow foci, which will get me more gold faster. All right, back soon. There we go, seven laser drills running full speed. And if I take a look at my ore, well, I have quite a bit of it uh, that is not quite getting processed nearly as fast as I am getting it at this point. Adamantium, osmium. Oh, these must be generating from... Oh, hey, look at that. I have 19... No, I have three nether iridium. Fantastic. I'm actually getting some out of my system at this point. So I'm going to need to set my some of these extra nether ores to get output somewhere else. In the meantime, though, I have laser focus yellows. I have 36 of these, which is way overkill, actually, as I'm only going to be setting five of these to be focused. And, hmm... What five is the question? I'm not going to be able to make it symmetrical, which is sad. Eh, we'll put the four on this side. That will greatly increase the odds of finding gold, sulfur, gl and glowstone, I believe. So, that means every cycle... Whoa, oh, out of power in my... wireless access. I'm very far away, so every transaction is costing a lot of power and I'm doing a lot of things quickly. Here we go. Just 
Just a little bit more now. Just need four more. And there's one, two, three. Oops, that's precharger. There's the third. Fourth. Might not have gotten that one. I did not. Okay. Easy fix, though. As soon as I'm back in range. There we are. Thought I had almost enough, but... I, I mean, I thought I had almost the exact amount. Only one extra drill's worth. Here we go. There. Now, if I take a look at gold, I should have lots coming in slowly but surely. So it's not going to be a fast process. Where am I getting extra pull? For? Oh, wow. I am actually overloading my gold furnace ability to keep up, aren't I? Or maybe not. Pulverized gold, gold dust. If I look up gold, eh, it's flowing in. If I look up sulfur, I have excessive amounts of sulfur. Wow. And I'm only going to be getting more. If I look up glowstone, yeah. Lots of stuff on its way. So hopefully those seven drills will be enough to actually get me the kind of gold that I, and quartz and such that I need for this quest. If I take a look at my turbine controller, these guys are getting drained dry by this. However, I am producing significantly more power than I can use out of this. So in the long run, I should either hit an equilibrium point or end up maxing out these turbines again. Yeah, no problem. Everything is good. Looks like this... Oh, wow. He's emptied out now, too. This guy is maintaining some small amount of power in him. Excellent. So, yeah. There is a massive laser array to start gathering gold for magnets because I'm going to need a lot of them. I also am going to need an awful lot more ender pearls than I have, both to make the end stone and to make the... Uh, eyes of Ender that are required for the magnet recipes. And to handle that, I bred myself some new bees. Specifically, the Winsome Bee, which is in here somewhere. There they are. These are made from Platinum and Oblivion. The Oblivions uh, come as is. They are available, I believe, in the end is where I set up the hives to get those. Let me look that up for you real quick. Yes, if you go into the end and set up a endstone cave. You're going to want it to be inside a bunch of endstone. And I have a handful of endstone left over from this. Then you can get some oblivion uh, bees. I don't know if I got any oblivion hives. No, I did not. But I, it seems I got an oblivion princess, an extra oblivion princess at some point from my uh, questing. I don't know where that would have come from. Actually, hang on. I bet it's one of the bee quests. The other Oblivion bees I have are set up in one of these apiaries right here. So let's see. Bee quests. Nope. Maybe it was just a lucky pull out of a bag. Yep. So I got the Oblivion Princess as a lucky pull out of a bag at some point. But you can get your own from the end setting up your scented hives. Anyway, moving on. The Winsome Bees also require Platinum Princess, and those are just Nickel Invar. You know how to make all of these if you can use any eye, which I'm assuming at this point you can. Otherwise, what have you been doing this whole time? So yeah, fairly easy to get the uh, to the Winsome Bees as soon as you have your Oblivion Bees, and those are a very simple case of go to the end, make an endstone cave. And the Winsome Bees, which are pretty fantastic. Hmm, let me see if I have an extra princess in here yet. Win some. I do. Actually, I have a number. Good. I'm going to start using these up. I want more and more and more. So, winsome bees produce furtive combs, endearing combs, ender pearls directly, and pulverized shiny metal, which, if you remember, shiny metal is used to make endearium. The endearing combs can be uh, centrifuged to get magic wax and endearing drops, which can be melted down for resonant ender. 
I'm going to need an awful lot of resident ender and ender pearls. As such, totally worth it. Hang on. Let's see. Ender. Whoops. Wrong box. Yeah, I have a thousand ender pearls. And in terms of pure pearls alone, I'm going to need like 46,000. And I have 27 end stone. I'm going to need 52,488 end stone. Well, no, about 46,000 and change again. And end stone, the easiest way to make it that I find is sandstone in a fluid transposer with resident ender, but it takes a quarter of a bucket. And each endearing drop, five of them will make one end stone. So, fantastic. Bees to the rescue for the bee quest. Seemed appropriate. So let's see, Winston Princess, Winston Drone. This will also get me more drones going so that I have more being created for the quests. I need 10,000 drones. I mean, sorry, not 10. I need 100,000 drones. I already have well over 10,000, but I'm nowhere near 100,000. Uh, Let's see. You know what? I can safely set up demonic drones... Quantum drones and winsome. Actually, anything that's significantly high. The energetics, I have a stock of them going. What else do I have? Energetic drones, demonic drones. I already grabbed demonic, didn't I? Demonic, quantum, energetic, winsome. Whoops. Did not mean to grab all of them, just one of them. Nope, that's quantum. All right, so I'm going to go set these to export into my QDS set to Bs. That'll work out. There we go. That's everybody. Okay, awesome. So these are the four species I'm currently using. I'm going to grab my quest book. I'm going to select the Bs and Trees, or not Bs and Trees. This is for bragging rights. One of the more interesting bragging rights, which requires a 100,000 drones of any type, luckily. So I'm going to select task. And go smack my QDS with this. Set the precision export bus to moving stacks of energetic, quantum, demonic, and winsome. And go for it. B domination. And they are moving in slowly but surely. It says forest drones, but as the quest description says, luckily for you, any drone will work for this quest. All right. So I'm gathering everything. I'm gathering the things I need for the last hoard the for the hoarding and bees and trees quest. I have no more quests unlocked in the end. I'm actually down to the last um, seven quests in the map, and I'm processing on three of them. So that leaves blood magic adept and McOries. McOries requires me to make a ton of food. I'm going to need to make probably every piece of food in the game. So we're going to be working on that for quite a while in the upcoming episodes. But for the rest of this episode, let's finish up Blood Magic Adept, which starts out pretty pretty easily. I need an Archmage's Blood Orb, a Rune of the Orb, and a Rune of Dislocation. Well, the Rune of the Orb, I mean the Archmage's Blood Orb, is a simple case of tossing a Demon Blood Shard into your Blood Altar with enough blood in it, which I've made myself at least one of those before. Hang on. Where are you, Archmage's Blood Orb? Fine, I'll make another one. I have another Demon Blood Shard. It's right here. So, oh, it was in my altar, because that's actually a really good place for it. So, in the altar, your blood orbs help you out as... Bleh. Let me explain this properly. Your, for example, a apprentice blood orb can't charge the altar to the limit that the archmage's blood orb can. That's what I'm trying to say. If you want to get that 10 million or whatever in there, you need the archmage's blood orb. Um... Hmm, you know what? I don't think this guy's going to be able to keep up, and these villagers are not getting close enough without the... That's a problem. Come here. Okay, good. There we go. I need them to kind of wander over. Oh, good, good. More of you. Good. This is working out in my favor. Oh, wow. That worked even better than expected. All right, so I'm going to submit that guy to make the Rune of the Orb and Rune of Dislocation. These are both pretty cool. So, the Rune of the Orb will increase the capacity of the orb that is in that blood altar. And it's made with two weak blood orbs and a master blood orb. And I think it actually consumes them. Let's find out. So, I'm going to need another weak blood orb. And this guy is just a diamond, if you remember. 
Where is my diamonds? Come here, diamond. Grab two, just in case it does actually consume it. I'm going to make two of these. And I'm going to wait for a this to fill up all the way before I toss a diamond in there. There we go. You know what? I can put the other diamond in there and we can be good. I don't know why I have a slime ball in there. That's weird. Wait for those to finish. In the meantime, grab a Master's Blood Orb, which I don't have an extra lying around. But the Master's Blood Orb is simply made from a weak blood shard, I believe, in the Blood Altar. A little bit of review going on here because, well, I guess it's just that time. Oh, both diamonds only turned in. Oh, you know what? It didn't uh, stack them for me because the output wouldn't stack. That's okay, though. I'm now able with my spawners to produce more blood than I can use to produce a Master's Blood Orb. So I can literally just set it and forget it. It's kind of nice. Alright, what else am I going to need for the Ruin of the Orb? Some Demonic Slates and some Stone. I should have some leftover Demonic Slates. I do. Grab myself four stone. Fine, I'll put it in manually. And just a minute longer. Well, actually, that can process while I go over here and get this crafting. Master Blood Orb. Two Demonic Slates. Four stone. Let's see what gets consumed and what doesn't. Ah, uh, kept the weak blood orbs. Quick, change it, stop. I don't need more weak blood orbs. I already have a bunch. So, yeah. As I was saying, this rune of the orb increases by, I believe, about 2% the maximum storage of a um, orb in the same altar. If I were to grab my divination sigil out of my backpack, or my golden bag of holding, I'm going to call it my backpack because too much kids TV. If I smash one of these speed runes and replace it with the Ruin of the Orb, toss in the Archmage's Blood Orb, when I take a look at this, it tells me that the Altar's current tier is back up to 5. And, oh, well, that's going to take a while. I had it out of the Altar for too long, and you know what? That's not worth waiting for. So I'm going to make myself another Demonic Slate. Uh, I mean, another Ruin of the Orb to hand in. The Rune of Dislocation, on the other hand, that one is less exciting. The only thing he does is allows the orb to, uh, I mean, allows blood to be piped in and out of the altar much faster, which, I mean, that's nice and all if you want to build a massive blood battery and store it somewhere, which, I mean, by all means, go ahead. But it's not for me. I would much rather have on-demand blood creation like I have. So, put you guys away. Need to make some water buckets. Which I'm going to need some buckets for, aren't I? That's okay. Plenty of buckets in here. And back home I go. Love the speed that I get off of this thing. Alright, three buckets. There we go. Actually grab them all. And I'm going to go use... You know what? I'll use the Machinist Workbench because it's right there. So... Bucket, bucket, bucket. Magician's Blood Orb. Imbued Slate. And some stone. There we go. Oops, missing two buckets. And poof. I have a Rune of Dislocation. Let's use Quest Book. Submit those two. Oh, that's it? I was actually hoping for a little bit more. Okay. So, toss the Mage Lord into the, I don't know, the extra over here. I don't know where to keep these signs. Maybe I'll put them on display inside of an item frame because that would be ultimate ridiculousness. Green Heart Canister, one legendary bag, which contains a legendary reward of a ton of pearls. Those are really useful um, for making, uh, well, those are only useful actually for making Mariculture. Jewelry, I'm actually going to toss them in the cosmetics, even though that's not where they belong. And you know what? Maybe as an extra special episode, I will show you guys how to make jewelry out of pearls. Let me know if that's something that you would like to see in the comments below. Okay, so that's everything for today. We are out of time. If I take a look at dirt, 
I am at 51 quadruple compressed dirt. Yeah, I might go make a handful more arcane bores and speed that process along. I'm getting tired of waiting for it. If I take a look at gold, I'm still at 28,000. I have a long way to go. I have this 11 pulverized gold that's not going anywhere, though, which is confusing me. Disturbing and confusing me. Oh, that's because I have a bunch of gold dust from applied energistics in there at the moment. That's okay. So gold's moving. Not moving quickly, but moving. And if I take a look at my bees, I am at 13% at 13,588 extra drones have been submitted. More and more will be submitted as more time passes and more bees are created. So, thank you very much for joining me. Please let me know in the comments below if you'd like to see me do an episode on mariculture jewelry. It will be quite a ways off before I get to do that, though, because... I am back to recording in advance. The time that this episode came out should be the time that most future episodes release. Also, please let me know in the comments below if you would like to see me mix in another Minecraft series before the end of Agrarian Skies. As it stands, um, with everything that needs to process for every quest that I'm currently working on, basically between now and the end of the series, I'm going to be primarily working on McOries and letting machines run off camera because I'm, I've got bee domination going, I've got um, dirt collection going, I've got magnetic personality going. All of these things I have the machines set up for. It's just a matter of giving them enough time to run. And I mean, I could take them to 11 and see if the, I could make something really ridiculous happen with them to speed things along. But there's so many resources that would need to be ridiculousified, especially for magnetic personality, that I don't know if it's quite worth it. Anyway, you guys let me know if you'd like to see another series start before the end of this one, in which case it would end up running every other day. One day would be Agrarian Skies, the next would be the next series. Or if you would rather I get this completely wrapped up and all the way finished before I start my next series of Minecraft Let's Play. Either way, thank you very much for joining me. If you've enjoyed this episode, give me a thumbs up and let me know. If you haven't, give me a thumbs down and tell me why. And I will see you next time.